guys and welcome back to the channel. This is Sketch Monkey here. I'm back here at Urban Motors because when I saw that they had a 2013 Camaro SS Dusk Edition for sale, I knew I had to come and review this car. And this is finished in blue ray metallic, looking super cool. And in this video, I want to let you know why I think this, the 2013 model of the Camaro, is the best Camaro since the original. The reason being is this styling. So what we're going to do in this video of course, have a look at the front end design, the muscle corners that we have going on here, the side view with these 21 inch wheels that I think fits this car perfectly, and the rear view, the interior, and then we're gonna take this 6.2 liter V8 for a drive. Let's have a look at some of the basic spec and tech of the Camaro Dusk Edition. You have a 6.2 liter supercharged V8, putting out 426 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque, connected to a six-speed manual transmission. All that power is sent to the rear wheels, and zero to 60 is done in 3.9 seconds with a top speed of 184 miles per hour. Fuel economy comes in at 16 city, 24 highway, and the price for this right here at Urban Motors is $35,000. So, starting with the front end design of the 2013 Camaro, and I'm gonna let you know why the reason is this is the best model year. This is the last generation of the modernized Camaro that came out in 2009 as a 2010 model. And I think this just symbolizes this muscle carness that is lacking in today's Camaros. Today's Camaros feel more like sports cars and more sleek, design they got a lot more curvy uh, the later years but not the first generation of this refreshed Camaro and that's what I love about this front end. So what really makes a muscle car a muscle car? To me it's all about horizontal and vertical lines in combination with a very boxy profile and proportions and this Camaro has all of those features. You have all the horizontal lines here and with this upswing a little bit of a radius in this corner here and then you have this aggressive looking muscle car head lights with the LED around it looking absolutely fantastic. The lower part is also very horizontal in combination with a couple of vertical lines to set the, the boxiness of that we want in a muscle car. And in the center here, you have this center fold that I think is so cool and creates a very nice looking chiseled front end of this generation Camaro. Coming up close to the headlights here and the light integration that we have in the Camaro SS. I love that we have the red SS logo here as well in red in combination with this blue ray blue metallic it kind of sets the ss off but we do have the indicator lights being sort of integrated right here in the grill itself in the furthest grill holes closest to the headlights that's where you have the indicator light and as you can see this is just a normal light bulb because this came out in 2010 so it's pretty far back but at the same time i think having this be light bulbs I think it adds to the classic feel of the design because we still have the big round modern looking LED headlights and daytime run lights in the main headlight. Coming around to the side view of the 2013 Camaro SS and here you can clearly see the inspiration from the 1966. And the thing that I love about this first 2010 Camaro is that they really hammered in the, the muscle car feel and they didn't go over styling like I think they did now with the modern Camaros in 2023 model year. So let me show you exactly what I mean here. We have the 67 Camaro up top and just look how closely this is related to the 2010 model, the first modern Camaro and then compare it to the 2023 like we have in the bottom, you become a lot more organic and more sporty in its proportions. This goes for styling as well. When you want to sketch this out, it's very easy to sketch a 2010 Camaro because it does have three separate boxes to it and that's pretty much it. Nothing too complex about out that design and that's exactly what a muscle car is supposed to be like and this is my sketch here with a couple of markers and a big pen and if you want to learn how to sketch you can check out my online course down in the description I also did a redesign of the 2023 Camaro and try to make it feel more like the original and this is the result of that have a look at the shoulder line going all the way here very sleek looking uh, side mirrors this looks super cool and then going into this corner right here in this intersection this is where things get interesting because here is where this 
this big muscle of the rear fender starts. Then you have some graphics here in the rear fender as well. And overall, I think it just has those clean muscle car proportions that has been lost in modern Camaros. These are 21 inch wheels. I kind of think they suit this car. I think honestly 20s would look better on this car. And that is weird for me to say because usually I prefer larger wheels. But in this case, having this classic look that we have on the, the Camaro, I think going down to 20 would suit the overall proportions of this car more than these 21s. But they still look pretty good and I do like that they're silver and not black to kind of offset the color that we have in the blue ray metallic. So looking at this roof line of the 2013 Camaro, a lot of people I know they complain you can't see out of these things, but I don't care about that because it looks so good and it looks very much inspired by the 1966 Camaro and that's what I love about it. Sometimes I do prefer to have a cool looking design over a 100% functionality. For example, the rear view in this case. I don't care about that as long as it looks this good. Coming around to the rear end of the 2013 Camaro here, I know this car is all about the drive. It's a manual six speed, 6.2 liter V8, 455 horsepower. I can't wait to take this beast for a drive in just a minute and rear wheel drive, of course, in a true muscle car fashion. But looking at the rear end design here, look how clean everything is and how much connection this rear end actually has to the front end with this center fold right going down straight in the middle of the Camaro and these very horizontal lines. I love how the taillights look and down low we have some proper quad bazooka. I would call these bazooka tailpipes because of the size quad tailpipes in the rear and a pretty sporty diffuser. What I love about these taillight integrations is that it feels like, I, I actually like the this silver chrome that we have going around it. It's not, it's not chrome, it's just silver. And I do like that they went with silver instead of chrome here because chrome would feel maybe a little bit too nostalgic. Silver like we have here feels more 2013, but still having that original classic vibe to the trim pieces around the main key graphics in the rear. I do love how these are integrated in the bumper because we have a section down here, a chamfer that's been carved out for the taillights to kind of be pushed into the rear end. It's details like that that makes it feel like uh, the designer is creating some sort of features around the taillights to make it feel like it's actually supposed to be there. And in this case, that is this chamfer that we have going around uh, underneath the taillights. Another chamfer in the rear that I really like here on the Camaro is this chamfer here. You see this chamfer, how it goes and frames, creates a foundation for the rear end graphics. Keep in mind that the, the, the connection that we have in the front end, we have the exact same styling here with the radius in the lower section of this chamfer and the sharp corner up top, exact same lines and the positioning of the graphics like we have in the front end. I think it's just a beautiful design by Chevy this 2013 generation of the Camaro. Welcome to the interior of the 2013 Camaro and it feels so cozy in here. The reason being the roof sits very low, this shoulder line sits very high creating a very narrow window here so you feel like you're in this cocoon and I love the feeling of that. I know a lot of people don't really like that to feel claustrophobic in here and I can kind of see why but it's still I prefer to have it like this when I feel like I'm literally being hugged and eaten up by the interior of the car. So what do we have when talking about gauges here? Look at how much fun designers used to have back in the day when they were designing cars. I mean, this is just straight out of the 1960s with some modern features and fonts and stuff, technology. But the style, the overall styling, it feels like they looked at the 1966 Camaro, took a lot of inspiration uh, from that and created this gorgeous looking housing for the gauge closet. It's very unique. Then you have a center screen in the middle as well. And this interior in combination with the, um, the Blu-ray exterior, I think it's a beautiful spec. We have this beach vibe with these sandy colors for the interior, this cream brown or whatever you call this sandy color and with the outside ocean deep blue metallic on the outside. Just a fantastic spec. Moving over here, we have the air vents, which are extremely easy to use. You can swivel it around with this uh, centerpiece here. You just open them up and then you angle it with this little 
uh, dial on the sides of it. Pretty cool integration of the, the vents up here, easy to use. Down here, this looks like a seven, maybe eight inch screen or something like that. Where you have some very simple navigation, you have the uh, radio control settings and the source and stuff like that, which you can use on the side here and the volume buttons and the menu select. Still all physical buttons with in combination with a digital display, perfectly laid out. Down here you have the settings for the vents, so the fan speed is this big dial and you select where you want the air to come out from with these buttons inside of this dial itself. You have the hazard lights in the middle and to the right you have the big dial, the same kind of layout, symmetrical for the temperature of the climate control and a couple more buttons for the climate control itself inside of this dial. Down here, these dials just makes me happy because this is a, again, a clear modernization of what was going on in the late 60s, early 70s in muscle cars with these gauges down here, beautifully integrated. You have the PSI oil pressure, you have the oil temp, you have the volts and you have the transmission temperature showing in these very retro styled uh, gauges in the center console itself. Beautifully done and I wish stuff like this came back in modern cars. Not just have a big flat TV on the dash. Create something fun like this that has a connection, that has a history for the brand and for the model that you're uh, designing today. Further down on the center console you have a 12 volt cigarette outlet and you have the big button, a massive button for the traction control and coming into this six speed manual transmission that feels so so tight and so distinct in the shifts. It's absolutely a joy to use this transmission. I can't wait to take this out on the road and feel how this feels when we're out driving it. Moving further back, very simplistic layout here. There's nothing complex about this interior. You have two cup holders. You do have the e-brake on the passenger side, which is pretty cool to see, unusual for sure. You have to kind of reach out back here instead of having it closer to you on, on the driver's side. I guess that is uh, because you have more space on the passenger side. And then you have a center compartment here for the RMS with a USB slot and another 12 volt cigarette outlet. Not the biggest storage in there, but who cares? This is a sports car, you're not gonna uh, pack a lot of stuff in this car. If you do, you still have the trunk. Coming around to the steering wheel design, it's a pretty uh, basic looking steering wheel. And again, I don't mind that. I do like that they made it feel a little special with the SS logo right here in the bottom. And then we have the same silver trim like we have in the taillights, framing the taillights in combination with a bit of chrome on the inside. I think it looks good, it looks classy, it looks a little bit no nostalgic. We also have the uh, yellow stitching on the inside of the steering wheel looking pretty nice. The controls for the radio is positioned right here on the uh, right spoke and then you have the cruise control settings. All that is located on the left spoke. Looking at the doors, typical, uh, I would say, uh, Challenger, Mustang, Camaro door design of this era. P super simplistic, big open spaces where nothing really happened. It's not too stylized, but it serves whatever purpose you need the door to serve. You have some compartments for the storage in the, in the lower section. You have the, uh, the door handle itself sitting pretty low down but you do have still some of that trim that we have right here. This leather is still coming back on the door panel just to have some connection with the doors into the interior of the car. Looking up here, I want to say thank you to whoever spec this car because we don't have a sunroof. And last but not least, we do have a pretty large glove box integrated right here under the dash. Now we do have a back seat here, but I'm not gonna try and jump in there because I can see I'm not gonna have any leg room whatsoever. But if you have small kids, if you have some uh, luggage, you might just wanna throw that back there. And with that said, it's time to fire, to do what this car is meant to do, and that is to hear the engine and then take this for a drive. So let's fire this up and hear what this 6.2 liter V8 actually sounds like 455 horsepower. So here we go. Sounds fantastic. Are you guys ready for this? Let's take the 2013 Camaro out for a drive. Can't get out that way, so I have to go in here and check the reverse camera how well that 
resolution is from 2013 pretty grainy but you know what I don't care I can still see all the major obstacles pretty much cars which are made up of three pixels each that's fine what we're gonna talk about now is this driving experience of this 2013 uh, Camaro SS you got the 6.2 liter V8 you have 455 horsepower and 455 pound-feet of torque connected to a six-speed manual transmission and you know what I think everybody around me here should thank me right now for giving them an opportunity to just see this beauty roll by because it's such a beautiful design this car I love this generation of the Camaro I think it's so much better than the than the uh, than the modern ones uh, just based on the styling this has this muscle car design intact in its lines and in its proportions which I think has been lost in the 2023 and even I think they started in 2018 to making it look more sporty and elegant than muscle car -y. we do have a very vintage looking head up display <laughs> up front as it looks like it's from the 80s or something but I still love that it's there very clear and very bright as well Oh, this noise is so fantastic. Good old V8. You know what else I love about this driving experience? I can feel the, all the mechanical stuff going on in this car. Still not the fastest car out there, but it's about the, uh, the drama when you're stepping on the gas and that's isn't that what muscle cars is all about? Just the noise and the vibrations and the mechanical noises. That's why I think this generation does so well. And that in combination, of course, with this interior design layout that also takes a lot of inspiration from the 60s. It's just a, a perfect modern muscle car, in my opinion. This six-speed manual feels pretty good, too. There's something, I'm not sure what it is I want changed with it. Maybe it's... Um, it feels good, but it's just uh, a little bit maybe, if, uh, not flimsy, but I want to have a little more clunks to the shift itself. I'm not sure how to explain it, but it feels good. It's a good manual transmission, and I'm glad that uh, Camaro actually put manuals in this course to begin with. I want to hear your thoughts. Which one of the new Camaros is your favorite? Do you prefer the first generation uh, with the uh, new modern ones in 2010, or do you prefer the new 2023s where they have more smooth lines and stuff going on? Let me know in the comments below. Huge thanks to Urban Motors right here in Denver for letting me review this car. And thank you so much for watching as well. And if you like these type of videos, you know what to do. Just hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video.